Glutathione is often referred to as the master antioxidant as it neutralizes free radicals and reactive oxygen species. These are all things that just go up with age. And this is why I've done a cycle of L-glutathione, which is the full name of it. So stay tuned to find out uh, the reasons why I did it and things you can look out for for your own biomarkers. So glutathione is technically a tripeptide, three amino acids long. And yeah, it can be sold as a research chemical in injectable form, but uh, also you can just get it from your everyday vitamin IV drip clinic. So yes, glutathione is very much part of the mainstream. I chose to self-prescribe it because I'm looking at specific biomarkers that uh, indicate the use of glutathione would benefit me. And you might be saying, I'm already taking N-acetylcysteine or known as NAC, why do I need glutathione? So stay tuned to find out my reasons for doing both. So let's talk about some of the general benefits. It's a great detoxifier. There's been studies showing that uh, people with fatty liver disease, either alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and the non-alcoholic one is becoming more and more common due to just people's uh, diets in this Western world where, yeah, obviously a high blood sugar level really drives up fatty liver disease. So obviously alcohol depletes your glutathione, increases liver inflammation, so that's another reason if you're a heavy drinker, then glutathione, you'd get a noticeable improvement by doing injections of it. As I mentioned, it fights oxidative stress, and a good example is with hydrogen peroxide that can build up in the hair follicles, causing premature grayness, as it preserves melanin. And obviously, gray hair is not necessarily a sign of poor health. It's obviously, there's genes that play a huge role in it also. But yeah, it can be a sign if you start going premature gray out of nowhere, that there's something that you're doing, maybe you're, you're having a lot of heavy metals in your diet, that's, and then that's cre creating more oxidative stress, which can impact various different areas of your body, but gray hair being one of them. So I've talked a great deal about oxidative stress, but even emotional stress, glutathione can actually be depleted from that. So in reverse, glutathione can actually induce the release of GABA. You know, you're calming that neurotransmitter that calms the brain. Obviously training hard generates a lot of free radical damage and glutathione helps there. So a lot of athletic people I speak to by doing glutathione, whether it be through NAC or doing it exogenously, they tend to notice that you get better recovery after exercise. And so yeah, doing it in the evening, I mentioned about the GABA inducing effects of it, but also yeah, doing it in the evening just to help with that uh, uh, recovery from intense exercise. So in addition to liver health, heart health is another factor that glutathione can help with. There's some evidence that in the case of heart disease, where you've got a lot of oxidative stress taking place in the heart, that glutathione can mitigate some of that damage. Glutathione helps in the production of white blood cells. So obviously that helps with your immune system. And this is why it's great after, say if you've had a bug, or even jet lag. And so obviously, as you get older, your glutathione levels, they steadily go down. And this is why jet lag tends to impact someone who's older. Same with if someone got a flu, then if they're 20 years old versus 60 years old, the 60 year old will tend to get the flu much worse than the 20 year old. And getting back onto modern life. So obviously we've got toxins everywhere. You know, you sit in a traffic jam, you've got diesel fumes quite possibly going into your cabin, you're breathing that in. So there's all kinds of toxins that are getting into your body and yes, that will definitely deplete your uh, glutathione levels. The UK being a good example, even if you live in a rural area, it's been shown that there's still pollution levels. Obviously it circulates across the country, so you're still gonna be breathing in these particulates and that does still cause oxidative stress. In the case of food, it's quite possible you're being microdosed with all kinds of toxins, whether it's pesticides, microplastics, or in the case of meat, you know, heavy metals where they might have been fed on something you didn't want them to be fed on. Say like with uh, um, farmed salmon, they, they feed them all kinds of stuff. And then you've got antibiotics because they're so close together. And certainly eating too much can deplete your glutathione levels. You know, in particular, methionine can deplete it, that amino acid found in a lot of high protein food. And getting back onto the 20 year old versus 60 year old example, the glutathione also helps with regenerating vitamin C and E. 
then a six year old is going to have lower glutathione levels and then that means that they would actually need more vitamin c and e in their diet which equates to the six year old being more deficient in those vitamins because their glutathione levels are naturally lower glutathione also helps with insulin sensitivity this is a subject i talk about frequently and for sure in reverse if you're insulin resistant if your diet's poor you know full of starchy carbohydrates refined stuff like sugar then your glutathione levels are generally going to be depleted because of that. So by making adjustments to your diet to improve your insulin sensitivity and taking something to boost glutathione levels, those are the people I speak to that get the best result. Following on from hair earlier, oxidative stress just carries over everywhere, even into fine lines and wrinkles. So people that do it generally, as I said, like if you're someone who's unhealthy and you do exogenous glutathione, then you're artificially getting your levels high without having to, uh, you're bypassing it basically. And they, these people tend to get the most pronounced effect versus someone who's extremely healthy. They, they still will get an effect by do glutathione because yeah, you're naturally, your levels will go down even if you are healthy. Obviously not that steep gradient if you're someone that leads that typical English or American lifestyle. So why am I doing injectable glutathione on top of NEC? And I'm already on the highest dose that's recommended for NEC, which is two grams. Some people go a little bit higher than that, but I think two grams is about right. You don't want to overdo it because you can get nausea and vomiting from it as, as well as diarrhea. Well, basically at that two gram point of NHC, your natural production is maxed out. So the only way to get it higher is through exogenous injections of it. And yeah, like I said, it's a tripeptide. It's very much, it's well established very low in side effects. And the dose that I've chosen to do is 60 milligrams, which is a pretty low dose. And by doing a low dose, it means that I can even do it subcutaneous. A lot of people would rather do it intramuscular, which you can get a bit of a pip in post-injection pain. I, I I've, have tried it intramuscular. I didn't really notice it too much, the, the pip, but yeah, some people might. And it's just, a lot easier doing sub-Q injections. You can just do them more frequently and you just don't even notice it when you do that. And so 60 milligrams is a dose that I've chosen. I do it over the period of a month. And it's something you wanna do fairly frequently because yeah, building up your immune system is crucial. As you get older, your immune system, it becomes more and more relevant to your mortality. The, as I mentioned about say getting a flu, then the more it wipes you out and then that has like a rollover into other aspects of your life and your health. Also have foods that are high in glutathione, so you're getting natural sources of that antioxidant. Some people are talking about doing liposomal glutathione. I, I think that there is good evidence that it is efficacious, that it is bioavailable, whereas the traditional oral supplements of glutathione have very poor bioavailability. Same with food too, that's why diet doesn't always get you there in this case. I've been on NEC for a long time. I was on just a lower dose of 600 milligrams, but I went up to 2000, this is late last year, just to try and get these biomarkers back in range. Here's a good example, N-acetyl isoputreonine. And with this biomarker, the only known lifestyle intervention is boosting your glutathione through NAC or other means. In addition to that, I've got other epigenetic data points that indicate oxidative stress. Also, my immune system age on my symphony report is going in the right direction, but it's still got a long way to improve. As I mentioned, I do it every quarter, especially when I'm training hard because yeah, that can set off liver markers. And there's been so many studies that have shown that uh, glutathione can help with many things like liver health. So yeah, it's, I really do believe that glutathione is one of the master antioxidants. It's not the only one. As I say, the uh, antioxidants is like a symphony, like an orchestra. So you just put one extra instrument in there and it doesn't necessarily make it a better musical piece. But uh, yeah, when you're combining it with a diet full of rich in antioxidants, then you're just building up that whole symphony of different antioxidants. And so all together, they have a synergistic effect. So I'm gonna continue doing it every quarter. I think it's a crucial part of my anti-aging protocol. It's pretty inexpensive. I get mine from Swiss Chems and yet yeah, they've been providing me with stuff for a couple of years now, really high quality ingredients, and I've had no issues with them whatsoever. So if you like that, then check out my video here on me reversing my biological age. Thanks for watching, see you next time.